You may recall our definition of potential energy when you do work to store energy due to position. And we talked about it for gravitational force. We can also think about it for the spring force. So here I have a mass on a spring, and right now the mass has no kinetic energy, and we can define this position as having no potential energy. So if I do some work on the system, now I've given it potential energy, and if I release it, it's free to convert that to kinetic. And in this system, it goes back and forth from kinetic to potential. So let's look at and calculate the spring's potential energy. So I'm going to draw it and think about it sideways. That way we don't have to do spring and gravity at the same time. Because so nobody wants to do that. So say this, you could think of this if you want as the uh, natural length of the spring, this position. And we are going to uh, push it to here. All right, so we have a finger here and we pushed it. F P. And bunched up the spring, coiled it up really tight because we're getting higher state of potential energy. And we're going to draw an axis, say, like this. And we're going to go along the x axis plus x direction. And we'll call the initial position A and the second position B. So we push the thing from A to B. So let's see. The work to move the mass from A to B is what we need to calculate. Because we always do a work calculation to figure out potential energy. So let's see. That would be the work equals the integral of F dot dx in this case. Right. So there are simple versions of work. Work is F times D. And then if you want to really do vectors, it's F dot displacement. But if the force varies with position, as it does with uh, Hooke's law for a spring, you have to do an integral if the force varies. So this is a case, of course, where the force varies. And we're going to integrate from what I'll call xA to xB. Okay. So let's see. We would plug in and say the work then is equal to uh, the integral from xA to xB. And we've got to think, now it's a dot product between the force and dx. And actually, the force we're applying is forward. We're not really calculating the spring's force. We're calculating the external force. It's an external work. So we're pushing externally with a force um, kx. Right? I'm going to leave that negative sign out from Hooke's law because I'm not calculating the spring's force. I'm calculating our external force. So that's kx and then dx. And the dot product um, isn't there because uh, they're the same direction. So the, the angle between the force and the displacement is 0, so cosine of 0 is 1. So got rid of the, not showing the vector part at this point. All right, so this integral of kx becomes 1 half kx squared. 1 half kx squared evaluated from xA to xB. All right, and then we could say that the work then is 1 half kxA squared minus uh, 1 half k x b squared, right? OK, so now we've got to think about it to do our sort of uh, mental version of what potential energy means, is once we move it to b, at b, it has the potential to gain kinetic energy, is one way to think about it, right? How much? Could it gain? Well, if we define um, u equals 0 at x equals xa, then that makes uh, uh, this part 0. Therefore, I'm sorry. Let's see. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> this wasn't coming out right. xb minus xa. There we go. So if we define u 0 at x equals xa, basically say that term is 0, then the potential energy is 1 half kxb squared, or just 1 half kx squared. The potential due to a spring is 1 half kx squared, if you define the potential to be 0, where x is 0. If you want the potential difference between two positions, this would be the potential energy. 1 half kx squared final minus 1 half kx squared initial. So now we have a second potential to think about when we do conservation of energy problems.